Hello. Before getting into the details of our learned hardware in the loop phase retrieval methods for holographic displays, let me give you a high level overview of what you will see in this talk. The existing rendering methods for holographic displays produce images of subpar quality, and we need to improve it significantly for holographic displays to be practical in future. So what I'm going to introduce to you in this talk is this very exciting new family of methods, which we call Learn Hardware in the Loop Holography, which promises exactly this, improving the image quality of holographic displays by order of magnitude towards practical, usable displays. So why do we care about holographic displays? Now, before even speaking about the future personal eyewear, which may be a few years from now, augmented reality displays can already have an immense immediate impact on our everyday lives in the form of automotive heads-up displays. Unique heads-up display capabilities enable the display of information coherent with the outside world. This simplifies the combined tasks of driving safely, monitoring the vehicle speed, checking the fuel and performance, and also navigating to the destination. Displaying all such crucial information in the line of sight without letting the driver take his or her eyes off the road is a significant improvement in driving experience and safety. Today, many experts in both industry and academia predict that the future of personal computing is going to be in eyewear. Such eyeglasses style displays are going to replace today's mobile phones, laptops and PCs and facilitate seamless interaction with digital information. You can only imagine the endless possibilities such displays are going to offer in future. Holography is perhaps the only demonstrated technology so far to achieve all these in a compact form factor. They promise achieving a wide field of view, high resolution, accommodation and focus cues, and many more. However, one critical restriction, one greatest challenge that the holographic displays face is its poor image quality. To better understand the problem, let's look at how holographic displays work. An incoming light beam modulated by a phase pattern creates an image on a holographic display. Computing the appropriate phase pattern is the core challenge of computer-generated holography and it directly affects the quality of holographic images. To compute such phase-only holograms, several heuristic methods were proposed in the past. gerschberg saxton is one of the most popular methods. In this method, we propagate the waves back and forth between the hologram plane and the image plane and enforce necessary constraints until a good phase pattern is found. This works reasonably well but it is extremely noisy. Another widely used method is the double phase amplitude coding method, where the waves are propagated back to the hologram plane from the image plane, and the complex amplitude is encoded into two phase only pixels. While this works reasonably well, again, it is not very robust, and we typically see some loss in resolution and sometimes even contrast. Last year, we proposed a first-order optimization-based approach for computing phase holograms, which we call Wittinger holography. Wittinger holography utilizes non-trivial complex Wittinger gradients. This approach produced perhaps the best holographic images in simulation so far. We are very glad to see that popular machine learning libraries such as TensorFlow and PyTorch now have complex number support with Wittinger gradients built in. This is great because now you can compute Wittinger holograms without explicitly computing the Wittinger gradients. This is because the machine learning libraries will do it for you. And you can use various off-the-shelf optimizers such as Adam, Stochastic Gradient, Descent, and so on. Different optimizers might result in slightly different solutions but any first-order optimization that utilizes Wittinger gradients fall under the umbrella of Wittinger holography. Although Wittinger holography approaches work the best in simulation, unfortunately, the quality of images on the display is not nearly comparable. 
Let's look at why this is the case. Existing state-of-the-art approaches assume ideal wave propagation to optimize for the hologram phase. Note that the hologram phase computation in fact happens only in simulation and the final computed phase pattern is shown on the display. Such methods implicitly also make certain simplifying assumptions of the display, such as perfect collimation, continuous SLMs, and perfect lenses, which would produce a clean image on the display, similar to our simulated reconstructions. In other words, if the real holographic display was ideal, a hologram computed using the existing ideal wave propagation models would result in superior quality images. Unfortunately, a real display has several non-idealities, such as non-uniform illumination, imperfect lenses with scratches, pixelated SLMs with non-linear phase modulation, aberrations in lenses, and so on. And all of these deviations combined makes the images coming out of the real hardware holographic display very noisy, resulting in poor image quality. As a result, when shown on a real display, these holograms show severe artifacts because of the non-ideal real-world wave propagation, which is both unknown and severely deviated from the ideal wave propagation. Since the wave propagation model is unknown within a real holographic display, one way to compensate for the real-world aberrations is to optimize for images coming directly out of the display. For this, instead of simulating the reconstructions, we can directly use the images as captured by the camera in the optimization. This approach can eliminate many artifacts, but unfortunately, this is slow and impractical, especially for display applications. Moreover, having a high resolution camera that sees the images exactly as seen by the eyes increases the bulk of near eye displays undesirably. One way of overcoming this is to calibrate for all the real-world deviations and use this calibrated model to generate holograms. Although it doesn't work as well as having an active camera in the loop, it can suppress many real-world artifacts. Unfortunately, this method requires identifying and calibrating every individual source of error. It is challenging to calibrate for all the sources of errors and this approach is fundamentally limited by the calibratable parameters. To overcome all of these limitations, we propose to learn the entire real-world wave propagation in a holographic display using a deep neural network. To that end, we design a neural network architecture that allows for accurate predictions of aberrated real-world observations. Once learned, we use this learned hardware as a substitute to the real hardware and compute high quality holograms for real hardware display. Here, we show how our trained deep neural network can estimate the images exactly as produced by a real hardware display. With this new learned hardware, I will now show how it can be used to eliminate severe artifacts in holographic projections. Here you can see the real-world aberrations as predicted by our learned hardware and how our learned hardware in the loop phase retrieval method eliminates these severe artifacts in simulation. Note that our network was trained to learn a completely uncalibrated hardware display. To further validate our method, we test it on a real prototype holographic display. Comparing with the previous state-of-the-art Wittinger holography approach, our method eliminates severe artifacts such as ringing as seen in the images and boosts overall contrast. Here I show a live captured video comparing the previous state-of-the-art method with our method. Using our approach, the effects of zeroth order undifracted light can be eliminated completely. As a result, the contrast of the images improve very significantly and generating black regions and subtle effects such as the smoke is possible in comparison to existing methods. This is another live captured video from our holographic display. Observe how the fine features on the peacock feathers are clearly revealed 
and the improvement in overall contrast of the image. The zeroth order undifracted light degrades the image quality quite significantly and eliminating its effect is a significant improvement for holographic displays. It is necessary because now black can truly be black. Here I compare images produced by different state-of-the-art hologram computation methods. As you can see, Wittinger holography improves over double phase encoding method and our method further improves image quality. In this example, if you observe the background, you can notice how the black regions are truly black. Achieving true black levels and high contrast is one of the major challenges of a holographic display, and our method achieves unprecedented contrast and state-of-the-art image quality. Here is another example. You can see double phase encoding method, Wittinger holography, and our method. You can see how the details on the skin of the starfish is revealed compared to the existing methods, and the overall image resolution is improved using our learned hardware in the loop phase retrieval. Here is another extreme case, double phase encoding, Wittinger holography, and our method. You can see how very fine details on the church window is revealed with our method. Again, note that all these images are captured on a real holographic display. Our method produces state-of-the-art holographic reconstructions on real display. However, we need that the learned hardware is robust and tolerant to several additional spatial, temporal and hardware deviations. This is necessary for practical applications to future displays. Here we show the robustness of our method using the learned hardware to camera translation. This is equivalent to eye translation or slippage of holographic near eye display glasses on nose. As you can see, the image quality remains the same. Similarly, we tested the robustness of our learned hardware over a time span of three months. One important thing to note here is that the hardware itself was disassembled, moved to a different place and reassembled. As you can see, once trained, the learned hardware is robust to hardware deviations and temporal deviations. This means that a one-time calibration of hardware is sufficient. And moreover, the learned network can generalize well to all devices of a given type. Since we learn the hardware just by seeing camera images, we test if the method is limited to the camera. For this, we compare the captured images from entirely different cameras with different sensor properties and notice that the method is robust and is not limited to a particular camera used for calibration. With this, I believe I have convinced you that image quality of holographic displays can be improved and that superior image quality can be achieved in a holographic display perhaps for the first time, and that a learned hardware-in-the-loop approach is a practical means to achieving this state-of-the-art performance. To summarize, real-world wave propagation is unknown and does not adhere to ideal image formation models. We compensate for these deviations by approximating the hardware with a learned neural network. The proposed hardware-in-the-loop phase retrieval using our neural network-based aberration approximator allows us to significantly reduce the artifacts present in real holographic displays. Our method is robust to spatial, temporal, and hardware variabilities, and is a more practical method to achieve high-quality holographic displays. For more details, please refer to our paper. Thank you.